Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Turn with me to the book of Hebrews. Chapter number 11. <clears throat> no, I'm not starting with chapter or verse number 1. I don't know I like to preach out of 11 and 1, but you know. 11 and 6. Went a little further. Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 6. <clears throat> you there, say hallelujah. Hallelujah. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For, the, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world, and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out, not knowing whither he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, and in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which had foundations, those whose builder and maker is God. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang there even of one and him as good as dead. So many as the stars of the sky most do and as the sand which is by the seashore Innumerable. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord there in verse number eight says that Abraham was going into the place he said he went out not knowing whither he went. Whither. In other words, he didn't know where he was headed. It also said that Sarah found herself to be faithful. God found her faithful. And because of that, she was blessed with a child by him who she judged to be faithful. Right. Who? That's who we're going to talk about tonight. Amen. Is the who. The who. We're going to focus on the who. Amen. Lord, we love you tonight. We're so thankful for your grace, your mercy, and your love, Lord. I pray that you speak to us now. Just let us receive your word, Lord, in the spirit that you have brought it forth unto us. Lord, let us let us just receive it now and let us claim it as our own in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord as the men sing. Faith 
in the Lord God Almighty. Amen. You must have faith. Just like Sister Ginger was talking about her mother. You've got to put it in God's hand. Right, right. Just focus on the who and quit worrying about the what, when, why, and where. focused on who's telling us and it don't matter about all that other stuff. All right. That's right. It makes not one Amen. bit of difference. Here we see a man that was 99 years old. The Lord come to him. Took him up and he said, Abram, you see all those stars? Count them. He said, never mind, you can't count them all. I had a bunch of them. Amen. Yeah. He said, that's going to be the number of your descendants. That's going to be the number of your family. That's right. Abram, 99 years old, Brother George. Yeah. Amen. He said, Yeah. Let's do that after. Now, the time the Lord says, Abram, you see all this land in this desert? Yeah. He said, that's going to be your family. That's None right. of your family. Yeah. All right. <coughs> How is this supposed to get accomplished? Uh -huh. See that I'm, I'm old and my wife, she's 90 years old. Mm -hmm. And she's been married her whole life. How is this going to come to pass? Uh -huh. Come on. Come on. And another time, the Spirit of the Lord visited his brother, and he said, I've come to tell you that, you know, when the time comes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let y'all have a child. Sir, I'm going to she said. But you did laugh. Uh -huh. Because she was focused more on what? My husband is almost a hundred. I'm ninety. This ain't gonna work too well. That's right. Hello. That's right. He said, How in the world? supposed to happen. Right. And God said, who am I? Right. Who is he? He is the God of the impossible. That's right. Amen. Nothing Amen. is impossible Amen. with him. Amen. Well, Nothing Amen. is unattainable with him. Somebody else. That's right. They believed it. 
You know what? When God said let it be done, it's done. When God said, let it be, a 99-year-old and a 90-year-old brought forth a child without any problem. You ever seen a miracle? You ever seen a healing? You ever had the Lord work in your life? Yes, sir. Think back on this and tell me honestly. If you've been if you've been praying for something and praying and praying and praying and praying and praying and nothing happened. And finally you just said, Lord, I'm I'm just tired of praying about it. I'm just gonna put it in your hand. And no time. There it was. That's right. Because you finally had faith enough. To say, God, I can't do this. I am but a child. I'm going to give it to you, Father. Man, you fix it. This is all about you. This ain't nothing about me. I can't do this. This is outside of my, my pay grade. This is outside of my reach. I can't do it. I am but a child. I'm just that that little fellow that gets scared when the, when the animal starts howling. I'm that like little fellow that, that gets scared when it's when it gets dark in the night. I'm that like little fellow that I don't worry about where the money comes from. I just know that Daddy's got this. Amen. Try to do that. Amen. We'll take care of it. Hallelujah. Sister Andrew, my little buddy Elijah, was just a little fella, he's still a little fella. I'm enjoying him up. I like him. Besides that. But when he was a little taller, you could watch him down there playing on the floor. He didn't have a care for it. He didn't worry about the rent. He didn't worry about the car payments. He didn't worry about gas or food. He didn't worry about all that. Right. Mom and daddy's got that. That's right. And everything that baby needs is provided for. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with us. When we take away our growing up mentality, right. we place ourselves as that baby crawling around on the floor. And we say, Lord, well, I ain't worried about it. That's right. stuff that's going right. on around me because I know you've got it. Yes. 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 God takes care of us. Yes. 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 He don't need our help. Yes. Amen. That's right. Amen. We need his help. Amen. 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 We focus on him and everything starts working for our It tells us when we focus on him and we put, start putting things in his hand that he'll work it out for our good. Right. He wants us to be happy. He wants us to be healthy. Right. He wants us to have the desires of our hearts. Amen. What good father wouldn't? Amen. What good father would you ask for a fish will give you a serpent? Right. Uh -huh. Come on. Huh? He's not going to do that. He's going to give us exactly what we need. Amen. Amen. And that's the thing. Uh, I ain't picking on the buddy. Same thing with Elijah. If Elijah come at four years old and said, Daddy, I want a motorcycle. Daddy yeah. said, no, you don't need to <laughs> No. I know my buddy Elijah, like he'd have that thing on top of y'all, <laughs> <laughs> Just to see if he could climb. <laughs> but he don't need no motorcycle. Yeah. Yeah. There's some things we want. That's right. <laughs> nah. Oh. Yeah, but 
God knows what we need. Amen. But by faith, we come in to a church service like this. If we come in and we're focused on Him, we're focused on the who, we're focused on God Almighty, huh? and we come in and we start to worship, we're, we're not we're not worshiping because somebody next to us is or ain't. We're not praising because you know it's the proper thing to do. Uh -huh. We come in and we begin to worship Him. We begin to praise Him. Yes, yes. Just because yes. we know Took on the name of Jesus. That's right. Amen. 
I heard Brother John James speaking on, uh, on video. If y'all have never listened to Brother John James, y'all need to listen to him. Amen. He's a, a little black preacher about that top. They call it the walking Bible. Uh -huh. Oh, Lord, he ain't there. He ain't Brother Thomas, that poor boy, he can start a Genesis and, and quote you word for word in Revelation. You can say, tell me what uh, Samuel, take Samuel 2, 16 is. Yeah, he's going to cut off of it. My goodness, he's just awful. But I've, I've, I've listened to him so many different times and, and heard him talk. That man is he's just so full of knowledge. But I heard him, I lost the turn of thought, and I got overwhelmed with him. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Thank you. See, that's why that's why I need to do He said, when I was buried in the water. He said, I no longer was Johnny James. He said, I came up with a new name. He said, my new name was Johnny James Jesus. He said, I ain't, I ain't identified by my old name. He said, I'm identified by his name. He said, I now took on his name. He said, I don't want to go back to this man Johnny James. He said, I want to stay Johnny James Jesus. That's right. Uh-huh. But we took on that new name. That's right. Here's the thing. Sister Jewel, when, when the Lord changed Abram's and Sarah's name, there was a change in their lives. When we took on the name of Jesus, each and every one of us, there was such a change in our lives. Yes. Such a change. The old man, the old sinful man is gone. He's dead, gone. No more do we have to just lean on him. Because before you take on that name of Jesus, you are on your own. Before that you are baptized in that name. That's why it's so important not to be baptized in titles. Right. Because there is no authority in title. Right. If you've been baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, there's no authority there for salvation. You must be saved, you must be baptized in the name of Jesus. There's no authority otherwise. I know I've said this, but I said it again. Because I want everybody to understand. Sister Tiffany, if I write you a check for $100, and I write on there, Father, Son, and Pastor, I'm, I'm a father to Sean, I'm a son, and Sister Martha, and I'm the pastor of this church. I write in there where, my, where the name is supposed to go, and I hand it to you, you can go up there at Farmer's Bank, and they're going to say, I can't catch you. Why? That's something because your name ain't on it, right? right? What is that name? Authority. Yeah, There's right. no authority to cash that check without that name. That's right. Amen. Sure. I can have all the titles I want on there. <laughs> but without that name, right. we ain't getting no money. Right. And without the name of Jesus, I'm not inheriting the kingdom of heaven.
And then I told Brother Wilson, Brother Baxter both at different times, I talked to him, I said, and I preached to the Brooks Arbor. <laughs> I said, and that was a bunch of Baptist there. <laughs> and Brother, Brother Wilson grinned, he said, it was. I said, yeah. I said, you know me. I was raised up in the Baptist school. I said, I told them about the Holy Ghost and the importance of receiving the Holy Ghost. And I never once quoted Acts 2.38. <laughs> I said, I went all the way around right in the book. I said, never quote it once. They all know how to get the Holy Ghost. Because most people outside the apostolic Pentecostal denomination are waiting on us to quote Acts 2.38. Study. 
Have you ever used your driver's license? Thank you. 